Hello everyone. Uh, in this video I'm going to be going over two examples of solving some nonlinear differential equations. Um, I mean you saw examples of nonlinear equations in the homogeneous equation video, but this one this is a different kind of equation, some special a special form of equation called a Bernoulli's equation. Uh, named after mathematician Jacob Bernoulli. Pretty sure it was Jacob. Anyway, so this is a special kind of equation in which we're going to make a substitution. And uh, after such a sub after a special substitution is made, the equation transforms into a linear equation that we can then solve. And then substitute back, of course. All right, so let's take a look at these examples. Now, in both examples, I have the instructions. Solve the given differential equation by using an appropriate substitution. And I've put in parentheses here Bernoulli uh, to let you know that it's going to be one of these Bernoulli differential equations. All right, so what are these Bernoulli differential equations? I'll write this off to the side here. So Bernoulli's equation. Any differential equation, first order, right, first order, that can take, that can be written in the following form. We have our, you know, derivative of y with respect to x, and again, it doesn't have to be the variables y and x all the time, so just please know that. Plus, you know, some function of just the independent variable x times the dependent variable. So you see how this is starts off like the standard form of a linear equation, if you recall the standard form of a first order linear differential equation. Equals, and then another function of the independent variable, f of x, but then there's a little extra that makes it nonlinear. Uh, this is multiplied by some power of y, so some power of the dependent variable, y to the nth, and that's what makes this nonlinear. Right. I, I guess unless it's y to the first. If it were y to the first, uh, then it would still be linear, but y to you know any other power, or the zero power, of course, but any power but zero or one makes this a nonlinear equation. Alright, so see how this is very, very close, right? This is, this kind of an equation is close to linear, right? It's close to the standard, it starts off exactly the same way as the standard form for a linear, and except for this y to the nth. So look what happens, what happens when I divide by y to the nth here? All right, if I divide by y to the nth, we'd have y to the negative n times dy dx, right? You know, that's the same thing as timesing, multiplying by y to the negative n, right? So I have y to the negative n times dy dx plus, you know, p of x, and then y to the 1 minus n equals uh, f of x. This will indicate kind of what I need to make a substitution for. Let me show you. If I substitute for this, this y to the 1 minus n, call it a new variable, say u, we're going to let u replace this y to the 1 minus n. And then let's let's see what happens. All right, let's see what happens here. And then uh, if this is the case, do the differentials. Uh, then du uh, if I take the uh, I should be taking the derivative of both of these with respect to the independent variable. Uh, then du dx would be equal to, and then using the chain rule here, 1 minus n, 
uh, to the you know one minus n minus one, so times y to the negative n times dy dx. Okay, and look at what happens. All right, taking the derivative of both sides of this with respect to the independent variable x, and look at what happens. You see here, I've got this y to the negative n times dy dx. Well, that is also here, y to the negative n times dy dx. So I make this substitution, you know, and we get this equation. Uh, we'd have 1 over 1 minus n times, uh, you know, du dx plus p of x times u equals f of x. And now all of a sudden, after making such a substitution, we have a linear equation in u. It's linear in u. This was nonlinear in y to start with, and after making this substitution and plugging stuff in, I get something that's linear in u. And then you can solve this equation as though it were any other linear equation. All right, so a lot of stuff there, a lot of stuff there. And let, let's put this into practice. All right, so first, first, I want to put this in this form, all right, this Bernoulli form. Okay. So just like with the standard form of a linear equation, I want the coefficient on the first derivative here to be a 1. So I'm going to divide through by x. So that'll be dx, uh, dy over dx plus, you know, 1 over x times y equals uh, 1 over x times y to the negative second. You know, that's 1 over y squared there. So you see how this is in the Bernoulli form. Right, you got your first derivative alone plus some function. This is the p of x here. Function of x times y equals, and then there's f of x, 1 over x, times y to a power, y to the negative second. All right. So uh, noting that this negative 2 is the n from the Bernoulli form. I'm just going to leave this the way it is right now and make this substitution. All right, and also with the derivatives and everything. Uh, so we're going to sub, since I recognize, oh, this is Bernoulli, I'm going to substitute you know, u equals i just introduce a new variable called u equals, you know, y to the 1 minus n. Right, y to the third. <laughs> All right, y to the third power. Okay. And then we're going to also take the derivative of both sides uh, with respect to the uh, independent variable x and make our substitutions, and that will transform this equation into a linear equation in this new variable u. So I'm going to differentiate uh, with respect, wrt, with respect to the independent variable x, right? Whatever the independent variable is, being uh, whatever is being treated as the independent variable in the equation, that's what I'll differentiate with respect to. So on the left side we have du dx equals, on the right side, you know, it'll th be 3y squared times dy dx. 3y right. uh, squared times dy dx. All right. So remember how what I did over here where I got rid of the y to the n? Let's do that here. So if I want to get rid of this y to the negative second, you know, I can multiply both sides by y squared. And that gives me y squared times dy dx uh, plus, you know, 1 over x times y cubed, which is why I substituted for, and maybe I should have done that in the beginning like I did over here, uh, equals 1 over x. And then 
we make our substitutions. So you see y squared dy dx. Right? I'm seeing y squared dy dx right here. Uh, that's going to be one third times du dx. Right? Just dividing by three, the y squared times dy dx. Plus, and then one over x times y cubed. Y cubed is now u equals one over x. So I'll, ha I'll have on the next page a perfectly now linear differential equation in u. So now we have one third times du dx plus uh, one over x times u equals one over x. Right, so now we have a, a lin linear in u, right? Okay. Now, uh, get it in standard form. So I'm going to multiply everything by three, get it in the standard form for a linear differential equation. So I have du dx plus, you know, three over x times u equals three over x, right, just multiplying everything by three. Find our integrating factor, remember this is the p of x here, and we get our integrating factor, hopefully this all rings a bell from other videos. Uh, the integrating factor would be equal to, you know, e to the integral of p of x dx. So that's e to the integral of 3 over x dx, which is going to end up being just x cubed. Because right, that would be 3 times the natural log of x, or just the natural log of x cubed, and e to that is x cubed. So I multiply both sides now by x cubed. Multiply both sides by this integrating factor. We've got x cubed times, you know, du dx, plus uh, 3x squared times u equals 3x squared. And the whole point of multiplying by the integrating factor, right, is so that the left side is the derivative of some product, right? It's the derivative of the product of the integrating factor times u with respect to the independent variable x. And over here I got 3x squared, and we can separate the differentials. All right, we have d of x cubed u equals 3x squared dx. I'm right, putting the dx over here. Integrate, that undoes the differential on the left side. We have x cubed times u equals uh, just x cubed plus some constant. All right, let's put some constant on either side. Uh, let me get solve for u pretty easily. Uh, we had to, we'd have u equals just one plus some constant over x cubed. But I don't want to solve for u, right? I don't want I don't want my equation in terms of x and u. I want it in terms of x and y. So once we solve this linear equation in x and with x and u, uh, we're going to substitute back. All right, so I'm going to sub back here. Now remember what the substitution was, u was y cubed. So I'm seeing u there and replace it with y cubed. So you could do it here as well, you could say x cubed y cubed equals x cubed, you know, plus some constant. And, you know, here's an implicit family of solutions, but if I solve here, if we solve for y, You'd have y equals the cube root, right, divided by x cubed, of 1 plus, you know, some constant over x cubed, or some constant times x to the negative third. And here is our family of explicit solutions to this differential equation, because right? I've solved for y in terms of x here. Family of explicit solutions. One parameter family, one constant there. All right. So yeah, so a Bernoulli equation, right, an equation of this form. In fact, I would I would recommend just dividing by the y to the nth if you reckon if you see it's in this form, divide by y to the nth and then make your substitution after that it should be a lot easier. And you should be able to turn your Bernoulli equation in you know that's an equation in y into a linear equation in some variable u and then solve and then sub back, which I have just done here. 
All right, and then you've seen other videos of mine. I like to check, you know, it, are these good solutions? Is this, is this, are these solution curves good for this particular equation? So I'm going to go to a slope field generator in Desmos again, and uh, you know, dy dx would be let's see, one over y squared minus y, and then all divided by x, which kind of ugly, but uh, if I multiply top and bottom by y squared, this would be one minus y cubed over x y squared. All right, so I'll put this in to my slope field generator, and then I'll graph one of my curves here and see how well that fits. So here's that slope field generator in Desmos. Put in the value of dy over dx here, so 1 minus y cubed divided by xy squared. And some slope field should come up. There we go. And let's put in our, our one, one of our solutions. So we had y equals, you know, the cube root. Um, I'll just put it to the one-third power. So we have one plus, and then some constant uh, divided by x cubed. So about, I'll just replace c with one divided by x cubed. And we'll do all this uh, to the one-third power. I'm going to make it the cube root. All right, there we go. And you can see, you know, if I, I'll change the color of this. Make it orange or something. Right. So you see my orange curve here. You know, it definitely follows the slope field. Right, moving my moving my movable point. You see how when I move this point along the curve, the tangent line, you know, the the, the direction of the slope field is going the same direction as the curve. Right, for all these points, any point on this curve. So it looks like this is a good solution. Um, I mean, I could replace this numerator here again. This was this where this one is. That's that was c. I could replace it with zero and just say y equals one. And you see y equals one. You know, had uh, there's a horizontal line that y equals one. That's that's a solution to this. Y equals one. Um, yeah, and replace this with anything. You know, negative two. And there's another one. Right. And, Again, should see any time I put a point on the curve, follows the flow, right? The, the slope, the, the lineal element on the slope field points in the same direction as the curve. Wonderful. Okay, so this is a good family of solutions uh, to our differential equation. Wonderful. All right, so I've got one more example of a, an equation that is a Bernoulli equation. Now again, it's it doesn't start off. Let's uh, let's ignore ignore this equation now. Right? Ignore all this. Right. So see, now I just wanted to keep the form of a Bernoulli up here. Uh, so we have dy over dx right, equals y times the quantity x y q minus one. Now this does not look like this just yet, but I can make it look like this. So you see if I distribute the y, we'll have dy dx equals uh, you know xy to the fourth minus y, and then just simply by adding the y, we'd have dy dx plus y plus one y equals uh, x times y to the fourth. Now this is a nonlinear equation in y, right? Because of this y to the fourth power. Um, but you see how it's got the first derivative of y with respect to x. X is again being treated as the independent variable. Plus, you know, the p of x is one here times y equals f of x is x times y to the fourth. Y, you know, the, the value of n here is four. All right, so like I did earlier and in the last example. Uh, I'm just going to divide through by y to the fourth. So we have uh, y to the negative fourth times dy dx uh, 
plus, and then divided by, well, that'd be y to the negative third, right, y divided by y to the fourth, equals, and then just x. And then I substitute for this. Well, sub for y to the negative third. So I'm going to let u equal y to the negative third power. Uh, differentiate both sides with respect to x, right, because x is being treated as the independent variable here. So du dx equals, and then chain rule here, negative 3 times y to the negative fourth uh, times dy dx. Right. Okay, uh, and hopefully you see the sub, you know, I, I see this y to the negative fourth times dy dx here, that is also here. So I'm going to substitute for that negative one-third du dx. So after making the substitutions, we have negative one-third times du dx uh, plus u, right, u is replacing y to the negative third, uh, equals x. And now we have a nice linear equation. Right? It started off as nonlinear in y. Now we have an, uh, an equation that is linear in u. Okay, and I'll multiply through by negative 3 to get it in standard form. And find an integrating factor and all that. Right? So we have du dx you know, plus negative 3u equals negative 3x. Right? Multiplying everything by negative 3. So from this, and now I'm in standard form for a linear equation. And I can find that integrating factor from this, right? That would be e to the integral of just negative 3 um, dx, right, with respect to the independent variable. So this is e to the negative 3x. The integrating factor is e to the negative 3x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the negative 3x. So we have e to the negative 3x times du dx minus 3 times e to the negative 3x times u equals negative 3x times e to the negative 3x, right? Now the whole point of, you know, multiplying by that integrating factor, right, is so that the left side is a, you know, derivative of a product. This is the derivative of the product of the integrating factor and the dependent variable, right, with respect to x. And this side is just negative 3 times x times uh, e to the negative 3x. And then I, you know, I can move the differential dx over here, but I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x, and we have, you know, e to the negative 3x times u equals Again, the integral of you know, negative 3 pull out there times x e to the negative 3x dx. And I'm going to do this integral by parts. All right. So now I've already used u. Remember here, I'll, I'll, I'll write the parts formula up over here. Uh, instead of u dv, I'll do t. t dv equals you know, tv minus the integral of v dt. So I'll let t be the x in this integral, and the dv be e to the negative 3x dx, then dt would be equal to dx, v would be e to the negative 3x times negative 1 third, and then this integral here would be negative 1 third times x times e to the negative 3x, right, that's the tv, minus the integral of v dt, so plus one-third times the integral of e to the negative 3x dx. And so we get negative one-third x e to the negative 3x, and minus one-ninth e to the negative 3x plus some constant. Uh, but don't forget this is being multiplied by negative 3. Uh, don't forget this is being multiplied by negative 3. Negative 3 is distributing to this. All right, so we have e to the negative 3x times u equals, and putting negative 3 on these terms, we have x, positive x times e to the negative 3x, plus 
plus one third times e to the negative three x plus some constant, right? plus some constant. Again, negative three times some constant is still some constant, so I'm just gonna leave it as plus some constant. And that can solve for u pretty easily. All right, just multiply both sides by e to the three x. And there we go. And I'm not done yet though, right? I gotta sub back, but we have u equals uh, just x plus one third plus some constant times e to the three x. But then we gotta sub back, right? I want my solutions to be in terms of x and y, not x and u. So sub back. I remember u here, u was uh, going way back up. u was y to the negative third. y to the negative third power. All right, so in doing this, we have here our implicit family of solutions. y to the negative third equals x plus one third plus some constant times e to the three x. And if you want a family of explicit solutions, you raise both sides to the negative one third power. All right, so y equals the quantity x plus one third plus some constant times e to the three x all raised to the negative one-third power. And here's a nice family, one parameter family of explicit solutions, because you know y is solved for in terms of all x, all x's here. Explicit solutions uh, to this differential equation. All right, so again, that's a lot, but it's the same procedure. I went through the same steps as the other Bernoulli equation. All right, I'll read them off to you again, and then we'll go and look at the slope field for this one. But you know, if you recognize, hey, it's in this Bernoulli form, divide by y to the nth, substitute for y to the one minus n, and then substitute also for the du dx, solve the new linear equation using an integrating factor and all this, and then sub back. All right, and then if you want, solve for the dependent variable, solve for y in terms of the independent variable. Uh, okay, well, let's look at the slope field now. See if this actually works out, or, you know, and if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't look good, um, I pro I'll, 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 have, I'll, I'll figure out that I'll, I've made a mistake somewhere and try to fix it. All right, so back to the slope field generator. Now, remember, dy dx here was, you know, y times xy cubed minus 1. So y times the quantity x y cubed minus one. All right, so there's a the slope field uh, for this differential equation. Now we put in one of our solutions. Y equals in the quantity x plus one third plus, and then some multiple, c times e to the three x. I'm just gonna put e to the three x, right? I'll just have c be one right here. You can, again, you can put in any multiple of e to the three x, and then all this raised to the negative one third power. Okay, now the slope field is not great, because um, again, whoever made this, you know, whoever made this uh, slope field generator in Desmos here, you know, they only made it so capable. Um, but look, you know, if I just move, if I move my point onto the curve, you see how the, the lineal element of the slope field is pointing in the same direction that the curve is, so it looks like this curve is good, and I keep doing this, I move it along the curve, any point on this curve, and you see how the, that, that little lineal, lineal element is pointing in the same direction that the curve is, so it looks looks like this is a pretty good solution. Right. And I can replace the, you know, put any any multiple here, put like, you know, two times e to the 3x there, and, you know, see how it just barely moved the curve, but still, it should work. Right. The, if I move this point around, the, the slope, it's still moving, you know, it's still, the movement is still dictated by the slope field. It fits. So, great. Um, this family of solutions is a good family of solutions to our differential equation.
yeah, lots to do there. All right, lots to do there. You know, make sure it's in that spe specific form. Make the proper substitution. Make the I mean, you know, and then, and then find an integrating factor. You know, well, first put the equation in standard form for a linear equation. Multiply both sides by this integrating factor. Solve and then sub substitute back. I mean, there's a lot to do here, but still doable. And hopefully this helps you when you're working on Bernoulli equations of your own. And uh, thank you very much for watching.